In this one we're going to take a look at a popular design pattern called the factory method pattern. It's one of the original Gang of Four design patterns and I'm going to demo it using an email marketing plan example. The factory method enables dynamic class creation and promotes loose coupling by removing the need to hard code instantiations in client code. The factory does that work for you. Before we start, choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you want to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. And so this is what we're going to base this one on. Here we have like an email marketing um, company and they have various plans uh, of various different prices with different features. What we'll do is have a class to represent each kind of plan and then based on the user actions, our factory will then go and create or go and instantiate the correct class representing the required plan. Here I am in the design patterns project inside the source folder. I'm going to add a new folder called plans and we're going to put everything in there and I'm going to create a plan factory. So the plan factory is a class which will be responsible for creating instantiating different types of plans. So it's going to be pretty cool this. It's got a namespace of app plans and we're just going to give it one method which will be called create plan and this method it will receive some information so one argument which will be a string uh, I'm going to uh, give it a default value of free and what this uh, method is going to be able to do is take that information that argument and create the plan that the client code needs so it's going to return a plan here's going to be the hierarchy I'm going to have an abstract class called plan and then the child plans of that we'll just create a couple of them we don't need to go overboard we'll have a free plan and a pro plan and that'll be enough for us to demonstrate what we need to demonstrate so let's go and create our abstract plan class so hopefully you're recognizing here some of the OOP principles such as abstraction and polymorphism as long as our client code receives an instance of plan it will be happy. So here is our abstract plan class. I've not made it abstract yet. We're going to have an abstract public function called get rate. So you can't enforce child classes to create certain properties, but a good way of getting around that is by saying having an abstract function called get rate. Then we know that we need to create that method. And so if we need to create a method called get rate, then we're obviously going to need to have a rate property of some type. And so here I'm making sure that each subclass creates its own rate property. So because the rates obviously need to be different for each plan. Okay, let's make this abstract and I'll talk you through what we've done here. So we have the abstract get rate method, which means subclasses must implement a get rate method and provide their own rate and then just a get features method. So we're going to have an array of features which should be different for each plan. So let's go ahead and subclass this inside my plans folder. I'm going to create two new folders, one called free and the other one will be called pro. And then inside of those, we'll create our subclasses. So we'll deal with the free one first and I'm actually just going to call this plan. So that's why I use the namespace free rather than call the class free plan. It's just something I prefer. I think it looks a bit cleaner if you keep these things with the same name, but not essential. The namespace is now app plans free. And because this is going to extend app plans plan, i.e. another class with the name plan, we need to give that um, class an alias. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. So use app plans plan, and I'll just say as master plan. And that's referring to the same thing. So class plan extends master plan, which of course is our abstract plan class which we just defined and then we're going to implement the get rate method because we need to and I'm just going to create a constant for the rate because it'll stay the same and obviously this is a free plan so the rate will be zero and then all I need to do in the get rate method is just return that rate we also need to give this some features so for a free plan we're going to say 50 emails 50 contents and no support or 50 contacts and no support. So that's our free plan out of the way. Let's now go over and create our pro plan. 
And so in the Pro folder inside of Plans, which is inside of Source, again, it's just going to be called Plan, except the namespace is going to be called App Plans Pro. And so it's the namespace which is going to distinguish this from the free plan. Again, we need to use the same tactic because the abstract parent class, which is going to extend, it's also called plan. So we give it the alias of master plan. And then we need to implement the get rate method. So I'm just going to borrow some of the code from the free plan, go back, paste this in and customize this. So I've changed the rate to 150. The features are unlimited emails, unlimited contacts and 24 seven support. And the, gate, and the get rate method works exactly the same as what it does in the free plan. So a little bit of setup there in order to get to where we want, but I think it makes it a bit more interesting sometimes if we uh, try and create something a little bit more than just demonstrating the principle. So the way this is gonna work is the argument which is supplied to the create plan method will be the missing piece of the puzzle, which lets us figure out which plan we need to return because that's gonna be the part of the namespace which will help us locate that plan. What we're gonna do first is check to see if a class exists. So because we'll be um, receiving user supplied data or as users which are gonna be providing the actions, we need to just make sure that we're not receiving nonsense and that we are receiving one of the valid choices. If we don't, we'll throw an exception to say that that class cannot be found. Otherwise, everything has worked, we're on the happy path. Let's return our new plan. So, hopefully that makes sense. I'll just make a bit of space and run through this. First off, we uh, build up the namespace and the name of the class using the uh, user supplied um, data or data supplied based on user actions. Then we new up that class and we return it to the client code, which is calling this class and this method on this class. And so rather than polluting the client code which we write, we here have a self-contained class with a single responsibility, and that is to create for us the class that we require. Let's create a file where we can go and test this stuff out. So in design patterns public, I'm gonna create a file called select plan. And this will contain some HTML and some PHP, just so, uh, just so we can test out that our logic is working and also display something based upon that. Okay, so usual stuff, I'll require the vendor autoload file. And then what we need to do is create a plan factory and our plan factory will then hopefully, based on information we provide it, create us the correct type of plan object. So plan factory create plan, and we're just gonna pass it the string free. So this hopefully should create us a free plan object. I'm gonna require a Symfony var dumper because I prefer that for dumping things out and inspecting objects. Let that install. Okay, and then here we're just gonna DD, which means die and dump, and we'll dump out plan factory. So I'll go down to terminal and I'll start up a server, shift into the public folder and then with PHP hyphen capital S localhost, I'll give it a port of 8000 and then we're just going to go straight to the select plan file and this isn't actually what I wanted, I don't want the plan factory, I want the plan which comes back from the create plan method of the plan factory. So plan equals plan factory create plan refresh and this is better app plans free plan which is the one we wanted as you can see there are the features so behind the scenes i've pasted in a bit of html to make this a better demo inside the head section i've just added the title i've got a link to bootstrap css which i use in a lot of my uh, recordings inside this um, main uh, section with a class of container I've put a little conditional in there to check for a plan. If there is a plan present, then I'm gonna display the rate and the features. Otherwise, I'm just gonna show a couple of links and these go back to the select plan PHP file, but they have query parameters. They have this plan query param and one will be for the free plan and one will be for the pro plan. 
I can access my query parameters using the get super global, so that's what I'll do. First off, I'll initialize plan as null, so that is the default value for plan. Then I'm going to check if is set get plan, so that's my plan query parameter. If I have one of those, then I'm going to take that value and I'm going to use it to pass it into the create plan method in order to provide the create plan method with the information it needs to find and create the correct plan. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go and give this a trial. So I visit the localhost forward slash select plan PHP page. Just going to bump this up to make it a little bit bigger. Then I can click on either of these links. If I click free, then the query parameter with the same value gets passed into my application. And if I go to pro, then same again, the query parameter with the same value gets passed into the application. And in that case, that gets passed to the create plan method. And therefore I'm given a free plan back or a pro plan back. And so just to check in with the things that we mentioned at the beginning of the recording, enables dynamic class creation. Yes, it does. So based on information which a user supplies, then at runtime, the application will go away and dynamically create the class which is required and promotes loose coupling because we're not hard coding any of this stuff, any of the instantiations into our code. It's all self-contained within our factory class and that does all the work for us. And we can just drop that class in and move it and put it anywhere in our code that we want. Why not reach out to me in the comments and tell me what made you watch this video? Maybe there's something that either myself or my subscribers can help you with. If you got value from what you've watched, then give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And finally, if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.